Part three of the final four episodes is here and Order 66 has been executed, just as I had foreseen. Although things didn't entirely play out the way I thought they would, Darth Maul aided in Ahsoka's attempt to escape, but more as a distraction than an ally. And why was he so much better at dispatching clothes than Ahsoka, especially when she beat him in the last episode? Let's talk about it. If this is your first time on the channel, please subscribe and use the force to turn on notifications so you can jump to light speed with MCE. Also, intergalactic trade laws require me to mention that if you are looking for Star Wars action figures, apparel, or any Imperial Band collectibles, check out Zavi and use the code MCE to get 15% off your first purchase of any in-stock item. So this episode packed a lot of emotion and substance in what felt like too short an episode. Also, there was not that much in the way of Easter eggs like there was in the last episode and definitely not as much as there was in the first episode. It picks up pretty much where we left off with now the captured Maul being made ready for his transport to Coruscant. Ahsoka is told by Rex that there is a briefing and that Anakin is there, so this would now give Ahsoka the chance to speak with him about Maul's vision. But when she arrives, it's too late. Anakin has already been dispatched by Mace to inform the Chancellor that Kenobi has engaged General Grievous. Just before she arrives to the briefing, though, we get a play out of the scene from Revenge of the Sith where Mace Windu tells the other council members that he senses a plot to destroy the Jedi. This establishes where we are in the fall of the Jedi in the timeline of Revenge of the Sith. After a quick discussion where Mace is kind of a dick to Ahsoka, she leaves to board the ship back to Coruscant. Now I say that Mace Windu is being kind of a dick here, it's because if he had only been just a little cooler with Ahsoka, maybe she would have told him what Maul's vision was. But alas, it is the will of the Force that things play out as they do. After Ahsoka leaves the council members, she shares one last goodbye with Bo-Katan and then leaves Mandalore. Now this is where things get really intense. The music being played here is very eerie, makes you feel like something dreadful is about to happen and go wrong for Ahsoka. Now as she is on the deck of the ship, she senses the death of Mace Windu and the fall of Anakin. It was cool that they used the actual voices from Revenge of the Sith to play this scene out. And this is further establishing where we are. Then in the next scene, Rex gets the order. Order 66. Now this is one of the speculations that I had in my last video that I was a little bit off on. I really thought that after Rex discovered the malfunction that uh, Fives had with his chip in that episode of the Clone Wars, um, that he had removed his chip after that point. It looks like he didn't. So, I mean, if he had figured it out, you know, that this guy, that his chip made him go crazy, I mean, I would remove it. So I, you know, I figured he would have too. So when Rex gets the order, Order 66, he calls him Darth Sidious, which I thought this was pretty interesting. And at first I was like, how does he know that's Darth Sidious? You know, shouldn't he recognize that that's the chancellor that's telling him to do it? But, you know, he has a disformity in his face at this point. And I really think that part of the programming in the chip is that the order is going to come from Darth Sidious at this point. So that's the reason why he says that. So when Rex first gets the order, he struggles. He drops his helmet. You can see when he picks up his guns, he's shaking. And I thought that, you know, he was going to fight the order at this point. And it looks like he does a little bit. He tells Ahsoka to go search for fives, you know, go find that file that he knows is tucked away somewhere to help her understand what's going on. But ultimately, he plays out the order. So he and the other clones then try to take down Ahsoka. But Ahsoka is able to deflect all the blaster fire and she escapes. So in the next scene, she releases Maul from his cage, and that's where things really ramp up. Now, in the last episode, I speculated that Maul would need to help Ahsoka for both of them to survive. And I thought that Rex would be there to help them. Now, I was wrong about that. I was also wrong about Maul's part in their escape. I thought that he would be more of an ally, but he's actually more of a distraction to help Ahsoka move along with her part. Now, here I kind of feel a little sorry for Maul. I mean, he's always being played as the pawn, right? Ahsoka, he gets out of the cage thinking that he is going to be uh, joined by Ahsoka and that Ahsoka is going to now join together with him to fight off the clones and escape the ship. But she's just using him for her own means. So I do feel a little bad for Maul now. So Maul and Ahsoka split up and both of them engage clones. But Maul is so much more OP than Ahsoka. Last episode, we saw that Ahsoka and Maul fought, but Ahsoka came out on top. So why is Maul so much more capable with dealing with the clones than Ahsoka is? I mean, even without a lightsaber, he goes to town against the clones. And Ahsoka nearly dies if it wasn't for the last minute efforts of Rex. 
My thoughts on this is that it's not really that Maul or Ahsoka is more powerful than one another. It's more about their focus and what they're prepared to do. In the duel between Maul and Ahsoka, Maul did not intend to kill Ahsoka. He was trying to turn her to the dark side. So yes, it played out in a duel, but even during the fight, he was still trying to turn her. I think his intention was to beat her and show her that he was stronger. Ahsoka, on the other hand, was intentionally trying to capture Maul or kill him if it came down to it. So her focus and limits to where she would go was much further than Maul was intending to do. Now in their escape, it was the exact opposite. Maul has no attachment to the clones, so he lets the dark side flow through him like a flood. He severed heads and arms and was brutally killing the clones. And man, did they show that. Just a little off topic here. These last three episodes were more brutal than any other Clone Wars episodes to date. Even more so than the movies, in my opinion. Alright, so back to what I was saying. Maul was free to do whatever he had to do to escape. Ahsoka, on the other hand, was conflicted. These clones just two episodes ago showed her their loyalty to Ahsoka. They painted their helmets to honor her. Rex was not only her comrade, but her close friend that she had known since she was a young Padawan. So she definitely didn't want to kill these clones. You can see her struggle with trying to subdue them and knock them out. But that's the Jedi way, right? They're keepers of the peace, not warriors. This is why the clones easily defeated the Jedi. They were not only caught off guard, but they must have felt betrayed and confused as Ahsoka is showing right now in this episode. She's scared. This is why she struggles where Maul succeeds. Maul came down the hallway like a horror. It was very cool to see Maul come down the hall and it just shows how great a character this guy is. This couple with the music in the background made this episode another exciting one to watch. For me, even more so than the previous two. We started out with the first episode reuniting friends, exciting heroic moments and music then moved to a serious and amazing duel with the fight between Ahsoka and Maul and then this final battle going out you know, for Ahsoka, the final battle of the Clone Wars, to now showing a shattered and destroyed Ahsoka. You know, the emotion and feelings I got uh, made me want to see more. Unlike the other two episodes where I felt that the length was good, this one felt short, like I needed more. Thankfully, the last episode will air on May the 4th, so only three days to go, and then it's over. This episode leaves us off with Ahsoka freeing Rex from his hold over Order 66 and finding out that all the clones have been programmed to follow this order. So what can we expect from the final episode? We know in Rebels, three of the clones join Ahsoka later on, Rex, Wolf, and Gregor. Since neither of them have been shown in the episode so far, I doubt that they'll make an appearance, but I'm hopeful to see them. I do not know the official length of the final episode, but I hope that it's at least an hour. You know, it's the final episode. We need at least one hour. That would be nice. That would be nice because there's still a lot to show. Ahsoka is currently trapped in the medical bay with Rex, and they still have to escape the ship bound for Coruscant in hyperspace. My guess is that they will make it to Coruscant before they escape. Since Rex is now on her side and Maul is still on a rampage in the ship, I think now my thoughts about what I thought would happen in this episode may play out. Since the last three episodes had establishing points to link it to Revenge of the Sith, I think that this last episode would probably do the same. She will speak with either Yoda or Kenobi just before they make it to the temple. So before Kenobi defeats Anakin or Yoda loses to the Emperor. This will keep it in line with the Rebels TV show where Ahsoka seems surprised to learn that Anakin is Darth Vader. So only three more days to go and I'm super excited to see what happens next. How about you? Let me know in the comments what you think of this last episode. And until next time, may the Force be with you.